So in this video, we're going to set up Prisma and then we're going to pass it through to our GraphQL context so that we can use it in our resolvers. So first of all, we need to install the Prisma CLI as a dev dependency. And once we have that installed, we can run npx prisma init. And it's just going to initialize a Prisma folder, which holds our initial schema here. And I'm just going to take the liberty of moving this folder into the modules folder so we can keep things organized. And you see here how it created a .env file. I'm going to add that file to the git ignore here. So like that. And so here we need to fill in the username of our database user, the password, as well as the name of our database. And we set this up last video, so if you missed that, go check it out. And we're good for now. So here we got our, our schema here. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a model called user, and this is going to hold all of our user information. So first of all, every user needs an ID which will serve as their primary key. So like that. And of course, it's an integer. And let's fill it in with a default value of auto increment. Then our users are going to have an email address, which is a string. We want every email to be unique. So we call that uh, not default. I meant to type in unique. And then we want to give this a max length. So we do db.varchar of 255 so any email address that's longer than 255 is not going to work out for us so let's do the same thing for the username and the password hash but that one doesn't have to be unique so we want our users to have unique usernames and unique emails and we have these constraints on it also i want the table that this model corresponds to i don't want it to be called user I want it to be plural, so I'm going to do at, at map and just type in users. And so we're almost ready to just uh, run a migration on our database and get everything set up. But before we do that, we need to tell uh, Prisma that we had moved the schema file to this location. So I'm going to go over here and just create this Prisma object here. And then here, schema. And then we just need to put the path, which is basically modules slash prisma slash schema dot prisma, like so. Okay, and so now what we can do is mpx prisma migrate dev. And this is going to get our models and just apply it to our database and save that as a migration. And I actually forgot to open up or run my database. So let me do that. And then we can try again. Oh, and I forgot to change the port to 5001. We had configured that in the last video. So now it should connect to our database. And it's going to apply these models and basically create the tables and everything for us. And now we have to enter a name for it. So I'm going to call this initial migration. And so now Prisma created this file or folder called migrations. And here we have a migration. So this is just the SQL that was generated by Prisma. And so we're going to source control this so that if we have any teammates, which for this example, we won't, but let's just say we have some teammates who join our project. All they have to do is run the migrate command and in Prisma applies all these migrations to their local database or their local container. And it's very easy to just get up and started de developing on this project. And it keeps things consistent as well. Prisma actually went ahead and generated the types and their client for us. So we have a type safe client available. So I'm going to go here in lib and create a file called prisma.ts where I'm just going to instantiate an instance of that client that I just mentioned and just export that like so. And so over here, when we're creating our GraphQL server in Apollo server, I want to import the Prisma client from that file that we just created. And I want to pass it on to my context like so. And now we have to update the types for our context so everything's type safe. 
So here we would do Prisma is in type of Prisma client like that. And so now what we can do is go into our resolvers here and we have access to Prisma. And so just to test it out, we can still return bool from this resolver, but we can do await prisma.user.findMany. It's just going to get everything for our users. And then let's console log that. And this is going to run every time we do this uh, query. And this needs to be asynchronous. So this should be null, but if it's null, that means it worked because that's what we expect. So let's do yarn run dev and you know, open up my browser here and let's head over to localhost 3000 to our GraphQL API. And so I'm going to run this query and I'm going to watch here down in the console. So we've got an empty array and that's a very good sign. Now looking at that empty array may not be very convincing that everything's working. So I'm just going to quickly do await prisma.user.create data. And then the email can be alice at gmail.com. The username can be alice and the pass hash or their password hash can be whatever. And so when we run this query, we see this here. And when we run it again, we're going to see two users. And actually, we're getting an error because we're trying to create a user that already exists. So that means everything works uh, just as intended. I actually want to automate the process of us restarting and resetting our database for development. So I'm going to create a file called seed.ts. And it's just going to have an asynchronous function that runs automatically and then we need to export an empty object because it has to be a module to to work in xjs so first of all we need access to our prisma client so we have to import that like so and so here we can just do await prisma dot user dot delete many so then this will delete our users every time we run this file and so now we just need to go in our package.json and tell prisma where our seed file is located or not where it's located but what we want to run when we run the command npx prisma seed so this will be ts-node and we're just going to run on our modules slash prisma slash seed.ts and we need to make sure that we actually have ts node installed um, I don't see it here so we can just go ahead and install it so yarn add ts node we could make this a, a dev dependency and so now whenever we run mpx prisma seed it's gonna run that on our database my bad it was mpx Prisma DB seed. I really didn't know what was going on. So let me just show you how I debugged this. I went here and I read this error message that says that you need to set the type to module in the package JSON or use the MJS extension. And I suspected this has to be something with TypeScript because we were using import export in our seed.ts file. And so I headed over to the Prisma examples and checked out their TS config and noticed that they configured TS node to compile its executable or the code it's executing to use the common JS module syntax. So I just did that and now everything works. So once you do that, you can run MPX Prisma DB seed and it runs that file against your database. Basically just runs whatever you put in here. And so now when we run our server and we try to create our user again, we're not going to get an issue. So when we try to create Alice again, it's going to be no problem because she actually doesn't exist anymore. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.